Hello guys, in today's video we are going to take a look at this SEM bulldozer. So it's a model I got on AliExpress probably two years ago with the intention of uh, converting it to RC and just never really got around to it. So I think this was reasonably cheap, there's not too many bulldozer models to choose from uh, in 132 so this is a 135 scale model. It, fairly detailed i guess sem is a chinese brand i'm not sure i wasn't really too bothered about the brand i just wanted to get a bulldozer that was around about the right size that we could hopefully fit some electronics into so you can see here absolutely reasonable detail on it little pipes sticking out in places uh, most of the stuff is riveted in it's not too bad the doors open on it so I guess that's okay as well. The lights probably not massive detail there. But it's good enough for what we want to do. One strange thing about it is the these rams don't actually seem to move up and down. And there was a pin here that fell out. But other than that it's it's pretty good. Like this this one at the back moves up and down fairly easily so you can straight away see that there's probably a mountain point if we took that pin out there we could put a server with it and just pull that up and down pretty easily so that's pretty good uh, the actual uh, blade itself well we can't move it up and down for start but it had this feature here for uh, putting a tilt on the blade i'm not sure there'd be any point adding that to the you know to an rc version i would also imagine with the real one you can tilt the blade uh, down to the left or the right but again there's probably not much value in adding that we'd probably better get a good uh, up and down motion from it and just get nice flat blade so that we can just push stuff around on the diorama that's probably the the main goal really and to do that i'd say we're probably going to have to drill a hole through the this front grill here and uh, just stick a, a servo through the little arm that'll just lift up from from that point in there just lift it up and down so detail wise it's pretty good but what we are interested in is how much space have we to get electronics so there's only three screws on the bottom here let's take them out and see what we're working with well as you can see we have loads of space in there it's just a complete cavity so we're going to have no problem getting servos and motors into this surprisingly there's no axle running through here so that means we'll probably have to drill through i guess there's a pin on this side so we'll probably have a sort of a guide hole that we can use to drill straight through and then we can hook up some motors which will probably be n20 motors so if we've say we've two n20 motors there i guess the servo to lift this thing up and down at the back is probably going to have to be up in the front here with a bar just running across the top of the two motors that'll come out to meet with the little point on that ram there that we were talking about earlier so that shouldn't be a problem um, these mountain posts here are pretty close to uh, where we're probably going to have the gearbox on our n20 motor so i would imagine we're going to have to lose those if we put a servo in the front we're probably going to lose this one as well so that's a bit of a nuisance but it's not terrible all we have to do is drill a few extra holes in this plate and uh, just add some new mountain posts maybe 3d print some mountain posts that we can stick in there but it shouldn't be too difficult really it's a it's a fairly ideal model for what we want to do it's just a huge amount of space usually the article lorries are, are something like this when you look under the cab there's a lot of space and there's not a lot of features to add like maybe we'll add a few leds but mostly it's just the two drive motors and maybe two servos to lift these uh, these two uh, well the blade and the ripper up and down the tracks themselves they don't seem too bad to looks like they're a little bit loose on those pins there so we might have to uh, tighten tighten them up a wee bit there's actually a spring tensioner in the chain there so that's actually pretty good in most of the models you get 
uh, this pin that's on the idler wheel is just fixed in a certain position so what happens is the tracks come a little bit loose and they'll just roll off when you're trying to uh, move the model with a motor because really it's not intended ever to be driven with a motor so having a spring tensioned uh, idler wheel there that's going to keep tension on the drive gear and that will make things a little bit easier for us when uh, we're actually trying to drive it it's probably less likely that our track is going to fall off on this model than on most but yeah it looks like the track there we're probably going to have to tighten up a few of those uh, little links but that's no problem uh, this uh, sort of a riveted no it's not riveted it's a well, it's just a press fit pin so that's fairly easy to get out there then okay so getting the blade off to work on it is not going to be too hard yes it's, it's held with this uh, couple of cylinders here which are just a wee bit too tight but it's not too bad i don't know how we get access to the the pin that's holding on the wheel there though maybe if we take the track off Yeah, that idler wheel with the spring tensioner is really handy. So, so I guess we could just get in with the pliers. And you can see there, the way it's kind of a little bit loose on the pin. Okay, I think the camera is in focus there. So you, you can kind of see that the track sort of bows out a little bit there. We could just maybe tighten a few of those in. And I'd say that track would be pretty good. You know, it was never meant to move to, to be actually driven. It's just meant to be you know pushed along or whatever so we'll just have to see how long it lasts i don't see any screws on this joint here maybe it's another press fit joint although that's fairly solid there well, this piece here seems to be loose enough but in the middle fairly tight there so unless it's it's glued together there at that point whatever way it's held we're gonna have to get access so why don't we break it out now and have to fix it after okay well I went a little bit medieval on it and this little pin here uh, broke but the rest of them don't look like they were glued in I don't see glue on those pins so i think it was just uh, pressed in i guess uh, when i was pushing it with the screwdriver maybe it twisted or something and just caught that one unless that just that one is glued in but i got the impression that just those four pins were pushed together and that was enough just to hold it together so here's our idler wheel mechanism that's simple and effective just little spring in there this end just pushes on the wheel and it springs in and out like that so there's our idler wheel so you can kind of see it's working something like that and there it goes right on this side we can see we've two Okay, we have two screws holding this little bit of plastic in here and there's actually no pin in this, it's just running on this kind of post. So that's pretty good. Um, we could probably convert this with a like a 3D printed adapter or possibly might be easier just to 3D print another uh, one of these gears. So we'll see how that goes. So for this post here, we want to get the motor in here so we need to drill straight through. The best thing to do will be to start with a drill that's the size of this smaller inner hole. Drill that completely through so that that's going to act as your guide hole when you drill all the rest of the holes until you get the diameter that you want. You probably want a, a fairly big uh, diameter because you have to get something, uh, some sort of adapter over the uh, the 3.2 mil uh, D shaft that's on the N20 motors. I think it's 3.2. 3.2 or 3.5 something like that but um, 
you're probably going to need like a five mil or six mil hole to do that but we'll get to that stage when we can but not looking too difficult at this point I think this is all still very achievable the best thing for the to lift the blade up and down I think is to drill through the uh, the radiator there and just just um, put your servo through there it, one of these little pipes is after breaking but like you know you're, you're not supposed to be swinging this thing around the way I am here um, we'll fix all those things when we're when we're finished that'll not be the only bit of detail to break when we're doing all of this I wouldn't imagine so that's really it it's all looking very achievable um, we have a load of space there to add our servo and motors electronics I don't think there's going to be any problem you get a lipo battery in there as well because you wouldn't really have a trailer on this so you're going to need to get your battery in there and just get up uh, two points out so that you can plug in the charger but yeah looks pretty achievable um, we'll see this build coming up in the future I hope you enjoy it and if you like the video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and to get subscribed and all of that but that's all for today i'll see you in the next video